We start 18 miles from Inverness. An out of use Royal Mail sorting van is added to the head of our train. Very soon the line to Kyle of Locauche diverges while we continue northwards beside the Cromarty Firth. Eventon closed in 1960, as did many others we'll see. I'll not keep repeating the date. Allness closed, but a new station would open here in 1973. The tablet exchanger is now history. This entire route is now controlled by a radio system based at Inverness. Since this was filmed, Invergordon has become a shore base for North Sea oil field activities. Sidings serving a large whiskey distillery. Now to rush through three closed stations which haven't been replaced. Although the village is over a mile away, this station remains open but is no longer a passing loop. The line turns northwest as we approach the Dornoch Firth. The shed for engines of the former local stopping service to Inverness of which Tain would have been the terminus. Of course, the freight facilities have long gone, as at most places on this line. About here, the Dornoch Firth Bridge opened in 1991, considerably shortening the road journey to the northeast corner of Scotland. As this station's in Ardgay and Bonner Bridge is a mile away, it was renamed Ardgay in 1977. The other platform having become disused, the footbridge has been cut up for scrap. It awaits removal. Carbisdale Castle built in 1907. We crossed the Kyle of Sutherland. In the year 2000, a footbridge was added alongside, saving a seven-mile detour. The 750 yards between these two stations is said to be the shortest such distance in Britain. The River Oikel is joined by the River Shin. We shall follow the narrow valley of the latter northwards. Lairg Station, 15 miles inland from the coast, forms a hub for remote areas of Sutherland. The post bus is now history. The oil terminal behind the green fence distributes to a large area. Our route turns eastwards and descends towards the coast along Strathfleet.
Rogart, still today a passing loop, but presumably a request stop at filming. The mound and the branch southwards to Dornach closed in 1960. The branch had crossed Loch Fleet by this causeway. Up on the hill, the Duke of Sutherland's memorial. From 1868 to 71, this was the end of the line. The line north of Galsby was built as a private railway by the third Duke of Sutherland, whose private station this was, serving his Dunrobin Castle. And this was for his private locomotive. Looking back, we catch a glimpse of Dunrobin Castle. This station has never been closed and remains a passing loop. The village had the most northerly coal mine in Britain. This isolated request stop closed in 1960. The Duke of Sutherland's railway ended at Helmsdale. I think this is water for the loco's boiler for heating the coaches. The mail van is uncoupled and parked on a siding. I suppose it will be used later southbound. After this interlude, we continue in a northwesterly direction, well away from the coast, for a second time. This is the Strath of Kildonan with the Helmsdale River. All the remaining lines beyond Helmsdale were opened in 1874. This private request stop was closed in 1965. Although Kildonan is still open, it has lost its buildings and loop. It's now a request stop. Closed in 1965, all trace of this request stop has gone. Seventeen miles from Helmsdale, Kinbrace Station lies within its tiny village, which must explain its popularity. It no longer has a loop.
devices to concentrate the wind and blow snow away from the shallow cuttings. The station building here is now a visitor centre for the nature reserve. Forsinard still has a passing loop, maybe the most remote on the entire system. Our route turns northeast. This is the flow country, said to be the largest blanket bog in Europe. Must have been a big problem for the railway's builders. The cottages we pass may have been for track maintenance staff. Although the loop and this platform have gone, the water tower survives. And I doubt there's any goods trains round here now. At last we have come down to the green lands of Caithness. The station building is now a private house. The loop has gone and this is a request stop. One of four Caithness stations closed in 1960. At George Mass our train is divided. The rear coaches will be taken on the branch to Thurzo. The route of the former Wiccan Leibster Light Railway. We will now jump from Wick on the east coast of Caithness to Thurzo on the north coast and return to George Mass.